Hello and welcome to another Introduce Programming and Database tutorial. Now I will going to be going over with you the problems that I assigned you in Chapter 6 uh, Assignment uh, uh, Part A. So we're going to be going over the very first problem that I assigned you and that was to print all numbers from 1 through 20 with the difference of 1. Now this is something that I already shared with you in the YouTube video tutorials. Now this is basically a modification to this code that I'm sharing with you. This could be done in either of two examples. Now why we need to print numbers 1 through 10, 1 through 20, which are the first 20 numbers. So we're going to be starting with 1. Our ending will going to be 20 because we have to print first 20 numbers. And then we're going to be incrementing by 1. If you, if you take the while loop, this will going to be your solution. If you take the for loop route, you're going to simply change your ending limit to 20. You'll drop the step 2 because it automatically for loop increments by 1. And this is it. This will be your solution for uh, the problem in part A. Simple as that. Now, <clears throat> when you're turning in the solution, you only need to either turn in the while version or the for version. You don't need to turn both versions. Now let's look at part B. In the part B that I have, uh, we need to display all even numbers from 2 all the way to the first 20 even numbers. Now, the first 20 even numbers, because there's a difference of 2, so the first 20 even numbers will going to be from 2 through 40. So therefore, our starting point will still going to be 2. However, now our ending point will going to be 40. And we're going to be incrementing by 2. And if I were to take the solution in the for loop, with this modification, I have pretty much achieved my solution. Now, in order to solve problem B in part A, there are two sets of solutions that can be dragged. Now, this is one possible set of solution. So now I'm going to share with you the second set of solution, which is I was going to declare two sets of variables. One will be called a counter. And the other one I can call the number that I want to display to the screen on the screen. I will going to initialize my counter to one. I'm going to initialize my number to two. What I'm going to do is I'm going to only use my counter to loop through, since I have to print the first twenty numbers. So I'm going to loop through twenty times, and I'm going to be incrementing the value of counter by one. So this is pretty much what my loop looks like. I'll re get rid of this statement. So just to show you what the loop will going to currently look like is that we have declared counter and number. Counter is simply going over the loop 20 times. That's all it is supposed to do. That every time the loop runs, it makes sure the value of counter is less than equals to 20, and it keeps incrementing the counter by 1. On the contrary, the number is somebody who I will going to use to display the even numbers. So this approach, when I take, I do not have to know what will be that 20th even number. So I don't have to do that calculation ahead of time. So I can use two sets of variables. One will going to just run the loop, and one will going to just display the output. And then I will going to output number and then I'm gonna do one more thing because number will gonna be two the first time it needs to become four the second time six the third time so I will going to increment number by an increment of two so every time the loop runs it will gonna display the current value of number will increment the number by two store it back in number and then we're gonna increment the counter by one so I'm using two sets of variables. Now this approach is extremely beneficial because if I change the problem and say I want you to display the first 200 even numbers, I need to just add a zero here and my entire logic will be good to go. But for the other approach that I shared with you, you have to first calculate what will be the 200th even number, which will be the number 400, and then you would have to write your entire logic around it. Now let's do the same one with the help of the for loop. We're going to declare two sets of variables. 
We're going to initialize the number to a value of 2. We're going to run the counter from 1 sorry, through 20. That will going to be the value for the counter, 1 through 20. And we're going to be stepping 1, so we don't have to write the step. Every time it runs, we're going to display the value of number, not counter. The value of number will going to increment by 2 because we have to display every even number. But the value of counter does not need to be incremented here, unlike while loop, because the for loop automatically adds 1. So this will be the alternate for logic and alternate while logic. So either of the two solutions are acceptable. Now let's do the even number solution, uh, odd number solution, which was actually your part C. So here, if I use the while logic, the only change I will going to make is I'll change the starting point of number to 1. That's it. I need to run the loop 20 times such that I keep incrementing by 2. But since my starting point is 1, after the next increment of 2, the next number will going to be 3. So if I start with 2, the next number will be 4. If I start with 1, the next number will going to be 3. So that's the only change I would have to make in both of these cases, and I'll be good to go. Now, let's look at part D, which is display the first 20 multiples of 5. Now, there are two sets of approaches that we can take, very similar to the approach that we just took. We're going to start the number from 5, and every time the loop runs, we're going to increment by 5. So we're going to start with 5 in the for loop. Every time the loop runs, we're going to increment by 5. That's one approach. Works great. No problem. Now there's another approach that we could take. And that's the alternate approach for problem number D that we're going to be taking. And this alternate approach is that 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, all of these are multiples of 5. There's a difference of 5, and then there are multiples of 5 as well. I need the first 20 multiples. So instead of doing all this add logic, what I'm going to simply do is I'm going to set the number to a value of 5, and I'll keep incrementing my counter. My counter first time will going to be My counter first cell is going to be 1, next cell is going to be 2, next cell is going to be 3. So if I keep multiplying the value of counter by the value of number, that will automatically generate for me the table of 5. The first time the loop runs, number is 5, counter is 1, so 5 times 1, 5. Then counter becomes 2, 5 times 2, 10. Then counter becomes 3. 5 times 3, 15. So I'm basically generating the multiplication table. So I don't have to do all this extra addition. And coming down to for loop, the life becomes even much easy. So simply multiply the number by the value of counter. Don't need to increment number, period. Or you could simply just put 5 in place of number and work with a hard-coded value, 5, like this. However, programmers prefer to a variable to put variable names, that adds to the code readability. Either way, the solution will be considered correct. Since it alternates solution for part D, either of the two solutions are acceptable. Now, the next set of problem that I gave you, part E, if you notice the numbers I gave you were 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. If you look at all these numbers, they are pretty much squares of the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that's what we're going to be doing in our next problem. This will going to be part E. We need to write a logic that we're going to run for 20 times. And every time it runs, we need to generate the square of the number. So we don't need this number variable anymore. We're going to get rid of all these extra lines. All we need to do is we are running counter. When counter is 1, we need to display the square of 1. So we'll just simply multiply counter by itself. When the counter is 2, we're going to multiply counter by itself. When counter is 3, we're going to multiply counter by itself. So whatever is the value of counter, we're going to just simply multiply by itself. And that's exactly the same logic we're going to be using in for loop. So we don't need any of these extra variables. We'll just use the counter 
to square itself. So we are basically using counter for dual purpose here. We could very well use an alternate variable, but there is no need to. This will be much more efficient code. So that takes care of your part E, where you're generating the squares of all the numbers, the first 20 numbers. Now if you look at part F, now that could be a little bit tricky for some of you, because in part number F, the way it is moving is a little bit difficult because it is moving in a very different sequence. Now I'm going to write the sequence down here. The sequence of part number F that I gave you is this. This is the sequence for part number F, for part F. 1, 2, 4, 7, 11. If you notice, there is a difference between each one of these terms, and that's a sequential difference. The difference between the first two numbers is 1. The difference between the next two numbers is 2. The difference between the next two numbers is 3. The difference between the next two numbers is 4. So it is the difference of the numbers in sequence. That's pretty much what it is. So if I add, if I run a counter from 1 through 20, like here. The counter is running from 1 through 20 because I have to print the first 20 numbers. And every time I generate an output, all I need to do is I need to add the value of counter to the current value of number and reproduce the next number. So if I say, let me go back and introduce this variable called number of type integer, and we were going to set the number to a starting value of 1 because that's the first number that needs to be produced. So all we're going to do is we're going to just simply display number here. So we're going to first display the current value of number, which is 1. Now, before we change the value of counter, what we're going to do is we're going to say, OK, we have a new value for number which will be the current value of number plus the value of counter. So since the value of number is 1 and the current value of counter is 1, 1 plus 1 makes it 2. Then counter becomes 2. So next time in the loop, the value of number they're going to be printing out will going to be 2. So the number is 2, the counter is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4. Then counter becomes 3. So next time in the loop, the 4 will print and then 4 plus 3, 7. Like that, we're going to keep looping. We have, if we have to apply the same logic in the for loop, I'll simply copy these two lines, paste it right here. So I need a declaration for integer, and I have a numbers assign a value of 1 as a starting point. And then as we are outputting, we're outputting number, and then we simply need to upgrade the value of number by making the number equals to number plus the current value of counter. And this is a for loop solution for the exact same problem. So you can turn in either one of the two solutions, whichever one you prefer. You don't have to turn in both versions. Now here I have part number G, the final part of this problem. Now in part number G, which is the final part, if you look at the number series, it doesn't really make sense. 10, 11, 9, 12, 8, 13. But if you start looking at a little bit more closely, there are actually two different number series running here. Let me color code it so that you can see the difference between the two different color number series that we are running. There is a number series which is 10, 9, 8. So there is a decrement number series. And there is a number series 11, 12, 13. There is an increment number series. So we're actually running two sets of number series. So every time the loop runs, you're going to actually be printing two values. So 20 numbers actually mean 10 numbers. So 10, 10 iterations, because 20, every time two numbers will be produced. So uh, if we run the loop for 10 times, we're going to be able to produce 20 numbers. So now let's declare these variables that we're going to be responsible for generating the number series. So we're going to be call this one uh, number series 1, and we'll have a number series 2. So we're going to call the nums1, nums2. So nums1, we're going to start it at 10. And nums2, we're going to start it at 11, because those are the two number series. Counter is still starting at 1. Now, the counter will only going to run for 10 times, because every time we're in the loop, we generate two numbers. So we're going to be outputting the, ser the series 1 number, and we're also going to be outputting the series 2 number. 
So this is how we're going to be displaying two sets of numbers here. Now after that, we will going to increment series 2 because series 2 is incrementing and will decrement. So we have to now decrease or decrement the series 1 by 1 every time the loop runs. And we got to increment the series 2 by 1. So we're going to simply say series 1. You simply need to go down by a 1. Simple as that. And series 2, you need to be simply getting incremented by 1. So every time you add, every time you subtract a number from series 1, you store it back in series 1. So first time it's going to be 10, then the next time it's going to be 9. The next time it will going to be 8 because it's constantly going down by 1. And the series number 2 is constantly going up by 1. So that's basically the while loop solution for this problem. Now let's look at the for loop solution for this problem. I'm going to be copying a lot of this code right from here. So we're going to be just taking all this code except for setting the counter to 1. And I'll be replacing these two lines with that code. So here we go. We have variables ns1 and nums2. Nums1 is 10. Nums2 is 11. Simple, exactly the same as while loop. But counter will going to be 1 through 10. And every time we are in the loop, we're going to do these four lines, which will going to be pretty much display the output for s1 and s2, and then decrement s1 and increment s2. And that will going to take care of your solutions for all parts in part A in this assignment for chapter number six. So anyway, hope you would have enjoyed this tutorial. And please don't turn in both versions. Only turn in either the while version or the for version. And also remember that I need this output either in the text document. You can just put in all solutions in one text document or a rich text format file or a PDF file or a document or document docx. Or you can even turn it in PowerPoint slides like I have done it. Or you could do it in any text editor on Macintosh, Linux, doesn't matter. So you don't have to use Visual Studio for this part. Hope you would have enjoyed this tutorial. Catch you in the next one. Thank you for watching.